I'm Peter Claussen from Bugs in Cyberspace. Hope you enjoy the video. If you have any questions about anything, ask them in the comments down below. As always, look forward soon to a Velvet Ant video, as well as a quick little day trip video out to the Columbia River Gorge with Jesse and Courtney from Shapes in Nature. This Saturday, we're doing an interview with someone who runs a business. Her name is Rachel, and uh, Doodle Bugs is her business name. And we're going to interview her about the business she runs, where she takes bugs and reptiles and a couple different kinds of mammals and amphibians down to museums and libraries and uh, for birthday parties and mainly to classrooms. I have a lot of customers who do that sort of thing and purchase bugs from me to show uh, in the educational setting. So please, if you're interested in that sort of thing, tune in to the Instagram channel, the Shapes and Nature Instagram channel, where you can watch our live stream. It's at 2 p.m. Pacific time this Saturday. Thanks for watching. Haven't done an update on the rhino roaches, the young ones that hatched, I don't know, a couple months ago. Mother's still doing well. And the babies have put on quite a bit of size. As you can see, the paler ones likely molted more recently. one here is very thick and, well, that one might be very close to the molting process. Got to be careful moving around in the container with young nymphs of various insects. When you have a big group of them like this, it seems like one of them is always preparing to molt. You can almost see a little bit of a line on the backs of them there. And it's at that juncture that their skin splits, their exoskeleton, and then they crawl out. But you can really see that they have put a lot of size on. Ah, there's more under there than I thought. Everybody's asking me, of course, if I'm going to be selling them. And I've decided that I'm going to retain all of them. Not so much to be selfish, but because I want to make sure that we are able to get a good breeding colony going for the future here of the U.S. hobby. So now I'm going to crush up these maple leaves that I just gathered outdoors because they've eaten all their other ones and I'm probably a few days late to the leaf party here. Also going to add a little bit of moisture, a little bit more into one corner, and then just a light misting sort of everywhere else for those that want just a little drink but may not make it over here to the corner. The larger ones, of course, do drink more. And I'll probably put this female back with a male here in a month or so. The babies are definitely doing really well. And I think they, third or fourth in star, wasn't really watching some size difference in them. And so perhaps both. Some springtails I saw have moved into the tank here in low numbers. Maybe you can see a few of them. And you can tell by the size of those frass pellets. Those are from the mother. So, rhino roaches, doing really well. Crushed up some leaves for them. Oh, come on, flip back over. And they'll be nibbling on those here momentarily. It was fun to watch the small ones going underneath their mother like that. 
And I like to crush the leaves up into more edible bits. Sometimes the little ones will carry a little bit of leaf off and it makes the leaves a little bit more manageable for them. And uh, like Wally from Supreme Gecko, don't like the veins of the stems and the leaves. Right, Wally? Here's a species that I don't feature here on YouTube very often for some reason, a Passimachus, so-called warrior beetle. And they do have a really great set of jaws. A long time ago on their sales page, I wrote that they are like stealth technology, top tier terrestrial predators, dispatching prey, everything soft bodied in their path. And I'll do a feeding demonstration here in just a moment. You can see the mandibles up there, sizable for the size of the beetle. And just really pretty beetle. Sometimes they'll have sort of a metallic purple or even green sheen. They're at the perimeter of the abdomen. Burrowers to some extent. Well, this one's gonna need a car wash now. Give it a little spray here again. Of course, they are very hard shelled and it just cleaned up real nice. It's got that glossy coating. And uh, I just dropped it into this cage for display purposes, although I'll probably just keep it in here because it was an empty tank. You can crawl there underneath this little bit of a log hide. And uh, I'll grab a Turkestan roach and we'll do a feeding demonstration so you can see what they're all about. Now, I'm gonna make it easy for the beetle there. Honestly, tried a couple other feeding demonstrations there, and they weren't taking, so for the sake of limited time and getting this show on the road, there you go. These roaches are pretty soft-bodied, and so the beetles have no trouble with them. And uh, it'll find a place to rest here in a moment. Not going to drop that juicy meal, though. And it will feed. We'll check on it here again in a few minutes. I'm going to pop the lid back on. So here we go. This beetle is just finishing off the last little bit of roach there. Not much left of it. Ah, it's like pig pen from peanuts. So messy. I just want to clean them up. Eyes are called Cubaris murina. Little sea pill bugs. I guess they're pretty popular in the isopod hobbies. I've never made a listing for them on the website, but <laughs> I don't really have a good reason for that. Just haven't gotten around to it yet. I just dropped a few fish food pellets in there for them, and very quickly they set upon them. Oh, a little privacy screen action there. Well, at least we can see those two cute little orange spots there on their terminal ends. Pretty diagnostic for the species. And just attacking those little bits of food, cichlid fish food pellets. One of my favorite feeders because they're small and often the bugs will not congregate them, congregate on them sort of in mass and maybe nibble each other's antennae off. If you put like one big piece of dog food in there or something, then you'll have 50 isopods chewing on one. That's that's getting borderline right there, that particular mass of them. See a mite crawling across the back there, one of those faster moving predatory mites. Those little mites are good in the tanks. 
there's another one right there. They keep the fungus gnats and other little tank pests, like gray, uh, grain mites possibly, at bay. Let's see, they move pretty quickly and they have those longer front legs. I'm gonna add in some more fish food pellets because clearly they want more. I should add some cork bark in here too. The substrate also, well, doesn't necessarily need changing, but you can see that it's composed largely of isopod frass. See those elongate bits there? Those are bits of substrate that have passed through the digestive system of the isopods. And so I will often, cases like this, sort of turn up some uneaten substrate in a few spots in the tank. You can see that one of the little sea, pu sea pill bugs is burrowed down there, and then evidence of one rolling up into a ball there as Pill bugs do, but sow bugs do not. And so you have to be careful when you're turning the substrate over. You may have molting specimens down there. So another species I've never featured on the YouTube channel here. Hope you enjoyed seeing these little ones. Probably not as much as they're enjoying their fish food pellets though, huh? I just pulled the lid off my Broad Keys Roach cage. These are Hemiblabora tenebracosa, a Florida species. And a lot of people keep these because they are a Florida legal cockroach since they're native to that state. A lot of people who can't keep them in the state of Florida, lots of big reptile shows down there every year. I get pretty excited about this species, and I have way too many of them in this container right now. Um, I actually am very surprised by how many just came crawling up through the substrate, because when I first opened it, there weren't many. But I was just cutting up some food over here, and perhaps they can smell it. So you can see two males here dump in some more food so that they can share more nicely. They have vestigial wings, a little bit glossy, and then there's a female. She's grabbed herself a rather large piece of cucumber and sequestering herself off here in another part of the cage so that she can enjoy it selfishly all to herself. And she's a little thicker and larger than the males are. See the size difference there between those two. And then lots of smaller nymphs in the cage. Add in a bunch more food here because there are so many and what do I do when I have so many roaches? Make sure that I update the listing on the website. Get some of them out of here. A few of them might end up going in the direction of my bearded dragon as well. Fish food pellets. So, I'm keeping this species for, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 years. Hard to remember, and this is probably the most I've ever had at once. Normally just do a few sales for the young ones as they're born, but 2020 has been a strange year. And so I guess I'm a little behind on listing certain things like this. Also just had a ton of Whitehorn hissers born. I'll be listing those up on the website as well. Broad keys roaches, sometimes also called horseshoe crab roaches. 
because of the way they look and probably the males in particular. They can't climb glass. And they reproduce in good numbers, as you can see. Active. They are burrowers. And of course, lacking wings, they are not flight capable, which is a draw for a lot of hobbyists. Not going to come running out of the tank at you when you open it, for sure. Poking around, trying to figure out what else I might show to you guys today. Got some ivory millipedes here. One there is actively molting. You can see a little bit of the exoskeleton still attached. And the paler color of this specimen. Its antenna there is just starting to move and perhaps the vibrations from my voice are causing it to move a little bit, or more likely, I guess, the light from my camera. But that transitional color form, not something that we see very often. some close-ups here. Now that one is clearly a male. Do you see the thickened segments there? One, two, three, four, five, and six back from the head. So the two millipedes in the frame here, the male at the bottom and the female in the upper left, you can clearly see the difference in the way those segments look. The difference there between male and female and sexing them from the top side. Probably not going to work but I'll turn this male over here and we'll see if we can look at the normal way of sexing millipedes. The male in that same area he'll have spacing there between his legs, and that's where his gonopods are. Did you see it there just ever so briefly? And so there's a pair of legs missing there, and you can see the gonopods. Can't always see them there often retracted into the body, as I understand it, and as I have observed it. This one here is apparently a bit of a show-off, though. And you can see a little bit of segment damage, purely cosmetic. one segment, sort of a V-shape. And right here, these two specimens portray the two different color forms that we typically see. The same exact species from the same exact locality, but slightly different colors. If you guys follow me on TikTok, you've got to watch the hilarious video I made of a mantis riding on the back of a millipede, like Kip and Napoleon Dynamite. And the one says, it'd be nice if you could pull me into town. Check that out, it's hilarious. These two are clearly females. They don't have those enlarged segments back behind the head. And the species is a bit arboreal. You can see this one here has climbed the bin tank wall. 
and looks like it's well thought it was going to do a jailbreak but it's just maybe trying to get away from the light nocturnal creatures secretive so these are ivory millipedes